What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm the Games Adjuster, Ethan Rodriguez, and today we are talking about the 1-4 to four player game, 18 Lilliput. So, uh, this is a game I picked up recently in a big uh, trade with an online store. Uh, I am a big fan of the 18XX series. I preferably love uh, 1830. If you look at my top 40 games of all time, it's pretty high up in there. And this was one that I found online that was a little more digestible. You know, so it's it's got the feel of the 1830 with some different mechanisms and a much shorter play time. So I thought I'd check it out. I've got a chance to play it a few times. I want to show you what I think about it. So let me go down the table. I'll show you how it plays. It's going to be a little bit different than my normal one-shot kind of go-through. Breaking it up into three different kind of distinct sections just for understanding purposes. But let me show you that. Then we'll come back here with those final thoughts. So here we go. Okay, here we go. I've got set up some of the uh, components for the beginning of 18 Lilliput. At the beginning of the game, there's going to be a draft in which players will either select the starting company that they want or their starting player. And so we'll, we'll decide the first player. They will choose one of the two, either again a special character or one of the four starting companies in a four player game. Uh, and then after they choose, the next person will choose one of the two until it gets to the fourth person, and then that person will not only choose one of the special characters, uh, but they'll also choose the starting company that they want. And then it'll snake back to the first player with the each player choosing whatever they didn't choose before. So, example, if I chose Balmuff on my first turn, got back around to me, I would have to choose one of the remaining companies that are still available. All right, and so uh, let's briefly talk about what these players do what the companies do, what you begin the game with, and then we'll start talking about building the track and how the game is played. So uh, here, if I, if I pick Skyrush Bogolem, I will get a 10% discount on train purchases. I will also start with these two special track tiles. Uh, here, Balmuff gets two special track tiles himself. These are towns, and those are harbors. Uh, and he also, once per each turn, at the beginning of the round, he's either going to get five pounds in his personal treasury, or 20 pounds in his company's charters. All right, Flimnap here gets a special tile, and he also can be sold any round, uh, preferably probably at the end, for 10 pounds per round. So if you sell, it's an eight round game, if you sold him around eight, he'd be worth 80 bucks uh, in your personal treasury, your private money, but you can uh, choose to sell him sooner if you really need the money. Uh, General Limnock here is gonna get this special tile, which is worth more money at the beginning of uh, the, the game and then as the game progresses it's going to be uh, worth less uh, money per run there uh, and also he gets you a 50% discount on placing stations and then finally we've got Emperor, Golbasto, Momerum, Evlame, Gordillo, Sheffin, Molly, Yuli, Goo. There you go and uh, he's gonna not have to pay for the yellow Y tractile and he's got the special Molly, Oli, Goo's castle which is worth 30 if you don't have a station here. If you do have the station there, it's worth 50, and we'll talk about stations and how you're gonna get those monies on the track. So, those are the special powers and the special track tiles you get for the character you select, and then each of these charters has special abilities as well. Each charter is gonna have four markers, one to track your stock price, the other three to be your stations. You'll get to place one station to begin the game, but they also have special uh, abilities, little nuances that they each share. So, uh, here, the Lilliput National Railway is going to give you two two trains instead of one with a starting capital of $500 in the company's treasury. Here, the Mildendo Railway is going to get you $550 in the starting treasury and a starting stock price of $55 as opposed to the normal $50. Uh, and there is a typo I should mention on this card here. It says $50, but it's actually $55, so be aware of that. Uh, here, in the Slamek, Slamekson Railway, You'll get 500 starting capital, one, two trade, so everything's the same so far, but you're actually going to begin the game with one of these Y track tiles instead of the other players having to start with either one of these or one of these. So there you go. And then finally, we've got the Glimmigrim Valley Railway, which starts with 500 company treasury, two trains, but their difference is every player normally starts with 30 pounds of their personal money in the beginning of the game. Whoever takes this charter, is going to actually start with another additional 30 at the beginning of the game for a total of 60, right? And I should mention there is paper money in this game. Uh, I know that's a pretty divisive thing. It's actually 
pretty cool looking. It's a, it's very colorful, very nice, very like, you know, English pounds kind of look here. Um, but I personally use poker chips. It's probably what you want to use too. But just for this example, I'm going to show you with the base game components. Uh, all right, so players will draft those things, and then we'll get into building track and how the game works. So let me clear this out of the way, and we'll go on to the next phase of the game. Okay, so before we get into laying track, I'm going to show you what might be in front of a player and some of the actions to be taking and then the, the stock board briefly. So in front of a player, let's assume we've already gone through the draft and I have selected Balmuff as my special player uh, and I've selected Mildendo Railway as the starting company that I will have. Uh, you'll notice one of my station markers is gone. It was four total. It's going to be placed onto a track tile next to Mildendo, which is the starting city in the base game, and we'll show you that here momentarily. I've also set the other one here at the stock price of 55 right here. Uh, and then the rest of this I'm going to explain now. So uh, there's a starting player card. This will be rotated at the end of each round. Again, there's eight rounds. Uh, let's just assume I'm starting player here. Uh, you've got the uh, diamonds card here, which is basically going to let you copy. It's the United yeah, Diamonds land card. Uh, and you will copy another one of these actions here once in the entire game if it's already been selected. Uh, and then it's gone out of the game. If you decide not to use it and keep it to the end, it will be worth 20 pounds. Uh, towards your private money. Uh, you again will start with 30 pounds. If I had selected one of the other companies, I might have started with more money, uh, but I did not. These special tiles that go with your particular character, Mal Balmuff's got these two towns available. And then uh, here is just kind of a player aid that's going to tell you the cost of the 2, 3, 4, 5, 3D, and 4D trains. When yellow and brown and green track tiles are available, the train limit that each company will have and then also when certain trains will be obsolete, and then rust, okay? Uh, here, when you select your company, you're going to get the director share. There are four total shares of each company. There's a 50% director share and three 10% shares in this particular game. You cannot get 100% of the shares of a company. Uh, there's only 80% technically available. The other 20% automatically just lost on their way to Lilliput. So uh, there you go, and then you've got the charter card here with the other two station markers and then the company's treasury which is very important you need to keep that separate from your own personal money so company treasury company's trains my personal stock uh, special power tractiles money diamonds land card and then first play marker and help card now publicly there are going to be other things available so there are four companies that are not yet chosen we've got the Bluffuscu national railway the plips railway the Tramexin Railway, and then the Wiggywack line. So those can be purchased and started throughout the game. Uh, you've got the remaining stock of all the other companies. So here's my other three shares of Mildendo Railway, the other 30%. Again, the last 20 is lost. And then you've got the action cards. Now these will not all be available in a lower player count game. In a four player game, they are all here. So let me just kind of explain what they do, and then I'll explain the track tile and I'll explain uh, how the stocks work. So a lot of these are pretty simple. They're going to have two actions on each one. So on your turn, you're going to, starting with the first player, select one of these actions to take, do either the top or the bottom of the card, that card becomes unavailable, and then the next player goes. And just like a draft, we're going to snake that back. Starting with the last player, they're going to take a second action card. So in a four-player game, eight of these will be used, two of them will be remaining. Okay, uh, so when you take your action, Pretty simple. The monies on the bottom represent money that will go to your personal treasury. So if I were to take any of these actions here, these seven cards, and just do the bottom, I would get five, 10, or 20 pounds, respectively. Okay? Uh, now, the ones with the track represent laying track. There are different phases of the game based on when certain trains are purchased or, or uh, moved in the bureaucracy phase. And these trains, uh, these track tiles will be tell you, these action cards will tell you what track you can lay. So here I can t lay two yellow track tiles. I can lay either yellow, green, or brown. Again, at the beginning of the game, green and brown would not be available, but later on they are. Yellow, green, or brown, yellow and a green, or yellow, green, brown, yellow, green, brown. Very simple. Uh, here are the symbols for purchasing trains. This card will let you purchase one train. Uh, this card will let you purchase two trains. Uh, two more here or three more. This one is the only one that will let you play station. The first station that you place is going to be 40 pounds uh, from the company's private money. 
uh, the second one you place is going to be 100, except if you have a special ability that gives you a 50% discount. Uh, then these here are going to let you sell, then buy stock. So you can sell as many stock as you want to, except you can never sell the director share. Uh, and then you can buy one single stock. Okay, when you buy stock, uh, nothing will happen, but when you sell stock, your pro price will drop straight down. So here I would go from 55 to 50 if someone had had one of these stocks previously and then sold it. Okay. Um, and then that's basically it. When you sell stock, you'll get the money uh, from the current stock price value and, and then, then it drops. So if I had sold it and I had, again, 10% share separately, that would be 55 pounds I would get, then the price would drop and be worth 50. And when you buy stock, Reverse, you just pay whatever the cost is currently. If I were to buy a 10% stock in Mildendo Railway, I would have to pay 55 pounds from my own personal money, not the company's money. Hello, future me here. One card I forgot to mention was the bottom second from the left action card, which basically adds to your charter a certain amount of money based on the phase that you are in. Okay, so I have set out the track tiles here. I just want to kind of highlight this, this part of the game. It's very important. Um, when you are laying track, at the beginning of the game, again, players will set these out. The, whoever has the Slimex and Railway is going to get this special wide tile, uh, which is worth 30 pounds, but these other ones can be chosen however the players see fit. I've chosen two straights here for Mildendo and the Glimmigrim, but the Lilliput National Railway has chosen the uh, L-shaped one there. And orientation is up to you. I could have oriented this way if I wanted to. Now, when you lay track, so let's say someone takes this track tile right here. I'm the first player, I might take this. In the beginning of the game, you're only going to be able to place yellow track tiles. So the rules are you need to follow a checkerboard pattern with exception of Mildendo. This checkerboard pattern is going to be cities and metropolis and then towns, harbors, or no city cards like these will need to be in between. So let me explain or show you kind of what that looks like. So if I was to lay track, I might lay you know, this track here, okay, so I'm going city, no city. Then I could probably lay this track here, city. I have followed the rules. I could not put this here. That would be breaking the rules. That city next to city, can't do it. I also could not put a city here. City, 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 not good. This needs to alternate. This needs to alternate. I could later, though, um, I'm sorry. Like this, maybe like that. Uh, later, you know, I could do something like that, and that's okay. Now, not every track on these to connect to another card, it just has to be connected to at least one side from where you're building it out from. So, here in this example, I'm building it here, I could not build it there, that would be illegal. Okay, uh, so let's just kind of say we're building this right now, and then it would go to the next player's turn. Uh, the different phases of the game are going to be when certain trains are purchased, and then the green and the brown tiles will be available. So at the beginning of the game here, the first two trains purchased, you will have a train limit of four, and you can only use yellow track tiles. As soon as the first three train is purchased or discarded due to the bureaucracy, then green, trials, green tiles are now available, still train limit of four. As soon as the first four train is purchased or discarded, you will have a train limit now of three, and your two trains become obsolete. These trains are double-sided. The two trains cost 80 bucks. They can run to two cities. When they're obsolete, they still run two cities, but they give you half the amount of revenue as they normally would. Once they rust, which will happen here as soon as the first five train is purchased or discarded, you not only get brown trains available or brown track tiles down to a two train limit, but all of these two trains that have been obsolete are now discarded and out of the game. They have rusted old technology. Uh, and then finally, when the first 3D train is purchased, your three trains will become obsolete, and then your four trains obsolete, and your three trains rust. All right, and four Ds are the largest trains. The D represents double revenue. So if I was to get 80 bucks, let's say, on a run, I would get 160 instead. The number represents how many cities or metropolis that these uh, trains can visit. So. Uh, we're still at the beginning of the game, though, so let's say we play this track here. Uh, some other players might have laid more tracks. Let's say they put that there. Uh, let's see here. We're going to build a city here. Uh, you've got these special wide tiles here, which can be laid by any player, but you have to spend $50 on the company's treasury to lay it, so 
you know, let's say maybe this player is going to do that by doing something like this and then paying their 50. And now everybody's taking their turns and we're going to run our trains. When your train runs, it is going to run from one of your or through at least one of your stations. OK, uh, and it cannot run through other people's stations. So let's say in this example, I've got somehow I've got two trains for the Mildindo Railway. OK. One of my trains could run from this station marker here to this empty city over here. That would be $20, $40 in revenue. The other train could run from Mildendo to this station here as well. And now I can't, I can always run to the same station. I can't run past that station multiple times. I can't run the same track uh, unless I would go a long way around and it ends up being the same, but it wasn't the exact same the way there, if that makes sense. So uh, Mildendo is special in that it needs to either be the end point or the starting point of your train run, but the station marker itself does not have to be the end or beginning. It just happens to be in this 2-2 two, two example. If later on I'd gotten a 3, I could go 30 to 20, that's 50, all the way to this city, that's another 20. I could not, however, uh, go this way because I don't have a station this way, and also, I cannot go through another station without uh, there being an empty space or one of mine there. So later in the game, these green tiles become more important because as you replace these, now I can still run through there. I have a station, but other players could run through there. So this green player could go Mildendo uh, through this way. And if they had put a green marker over on this side, let's say... They could run straight through here with a three train if they had one and go Mildendo, that's 30, 60, 70, 80 in revenue. Okay, you're always going to take the best revenue possible. You cannot purposely take a lower one just so that people get less money. Uh, and then after you've calculated your revenue, you will make a decision as that company's director to either withhold money or pay dividends. If you withhold the money, then the full 100% of your revenue will go to your company's private charter. Okay, so in this example, if I had run a three train with green and a two train with green, the three train could have gone this way, that's 30, 60, 70, 80. The two train could have gone this way, that's 30, 50. Uh, so that would be 80 plus 50, 130. If I keep it, I'll take 130 from the bank and put it with the Glimmergram Valley Railway, that's the green company's, uh, or green player's company. Alternatively, I could have paid dividends. When I pay dividends, I'm paying the percentage of shares from the revenue. So example, director shares 50%, half of 130, 65 pounds. That goes to the green player's private treasury. Anyone who has a 10% share of the Grimavan Valley Railway would also get 10% of 130. So if I had two of these, that'd be $26. If I only had one, that's $13 per pound. All right. Uh, and then if you decide to pay dividends, then your stock price goes up. So go into the stock board here. You'll slide one space to the right. If actually there was already a player there, you slide underneath them. If you choose to withhold dividends uh, and put that in the company's monies, then you would actually slide down. Same thing. You go underneath the other players and you lose your stock value. All right. Uh, and notice that it's different. You slide left and right with, your, with regards to dividends. When you sell stock, you actually go down. So if someone sold, let's say, three stock and my price was at 100, I would go down, up, down, up, like that, okay? It's only when you sell stock. Otherwise, it's left and right. Now, um, more rules with the track. The track itself, you have to upgrade yellow to green, then green to brown. And the only rule with that as well is you have to maintain the tracks that's already existing. So for example, when I replace this one here, there was a straight track here. I added this one here. That's fine. If I could, I could have gone this way as well. The same thing would have been okay. I could not have gone like this because there was already track that existed here. And I need to maintain that. So it's either this way or this way. All right. Also, some of these tiles, as you get into the expansion rules and things like that, expansion, but module rules will have water. Water could never have track going into it. This is a special couple tiles for Skyrish Bogolum, and these are harbors, which can be at the end or the beginning of a track, just kind of like Mildendo, and they add extra monies. 
Uh, also, there are special tiles like the ones that Balmuff comes with, which are towns. Towns are counted just like these, and they do not uh, count against the checkerboard restriction. So I could have put this tile here, for instance, and I would have collected an extra 10 pounds if I'd gone this direction with the green company. So 20, 30, 60. And again, it's fine. That does not count against your city checkerboard pattern. And he comes with two of those like this. Uh, these special track tiles, when placed by the players, can be placed in addition to their normal action. Um, but I don't believe they can be placed in between. There's some rules or discrepancies on that on BGG. You can check that out. Some folks say yes, it can. Others say no. You can look that up for yourself. Um, what else here? That's basically it on the track laying and the, and the train running. As you get more trains, you're going to have to look more extensively at what's the most optimal route because you do owe it to your shareholders to take the most optimal route. Uh, but you can use that with your friends and you can work that out. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention, and, and that's pretty much everything in the game, honestly. Um, as far as when you take this action to buy and sell stocks, you could also float a company. Okay. So when you would choose to start a new company, and again, there are four that are start out of the game. Let's just say I chose this orange one here, the WikiWack line. I would need to select a share price. So let's say I put 80. Um, so I'll put the 80 right there. That's the starting share price. And then pay five times eight, which of my personal money, because I am starting a new company. The company, one company cannot start another company, but I could start two companies if I wanted to. So in this example, five times eight would be $400. If I paid 400 pounds, uh, then I would start a new company and I would take that company's charter card, their 50% director share. These would be made available to other players. And then I would take one of their station markers and put it on any open city on the board that I wanted to. So maybe I might throw that here, give myself some options, okay? Also, after I've done that, I can select a train. In the bureaucracy phase, there's going to be a train pool here. Normally, when players purchase trains, they can only purchase trains from this section here, the bank. But at the, end, at the end of each round, we're going to take the top card here and put it into the available train pool. This is only available to new companies or companies that are buying trains at the end of uh, running their trains here or withholding dividends. Uh, so if... I started a new company, I could choose any of the ones available here and purchase those. So I spent 80 pounds from my uh, treasury here and you would actually get 10 times the share price in your private money. So you'd actually start with 800 in company treasury, but it costs you, your player, 400 pounds to float the company. Uh, and then you could spend that. So if I bought this train here from the train pool, I would actually have 720 remaining to do whatever I want with. Uh, and then that company would run when the player runs. And the companies run trains, uh, sorry, not when the player runs, they would run in price order. So whoever is the highest would run first. Uh, if there's a tie, I believe it's whoever is just stacked on top. And that's pretty much the game. So I know I kind of broke it up. It's not my typical run through, but it's kind of a lot of information. I want to really make sure I, I kind of focused in on it. So let me go up top. Let me tell you what I think about it. And here we go. All right, there you go. So let's talk about it. We'll start with the theme. I really enjoy the theme. If you've read Gulliver's Travels, you know, that's kind of what this is based on. Uh, and it's just fun. You know, it's a fun theme. It, nothing that you're really doing is thematic in the sense of the, the book or anything. Uh, but it's just a fun cover of these 18xx games. A lot of times they're kind of periods in history, you know, 1846, 1830, 1889, whatever, you know. They're historical themed and, and they do a good job of making them like historically accurate. This one has the benefit of kind of not being historical and just being fun and wacky. And I don't know, I really like it. Um, so it's more, it's not any more thematic, I guess, than any other 18xx games because, because if anything, this is less thematic, but I enjoy the theme that's covered on top of it, if that makes sense. So production wise, I think it's pretty solid. You know, I'm not a big fan of the paper money and I still won't use the paper money. I will just use poker chips, but these, this paper money is pretty nice. The little colorful uh, bank notes that they have available. Also, I do like playing the more uh, artistic side of the track tiles. You do have the option of flipping them over and getting the, this just traditional yellow with black line as your track or green, black, you know, whatever. I like the artwork in here. I think it's really well done. 
I also like uh, that they give you the option. I don't know that I would ever do this, but I showed you the stock price board is a track or is a board of one piece. And then I also showed uh, on that board is the turn order. They give you cards that you can track the stock on too if you want to. Maybe if you want to do it vertically uh, along with a turn track, kind of save table space. So that's neat. That's good that they threw that in there. They also give you some um, ledgers that you can track your money on instead of having to use even the bank notes or poker chips. So that's pretty cool too. And then the little tokens are nice. I kind of like with 18 Lilliput, right? It's all about kind of the small, you know, Lilliputian culture, right? This little tiny people and this little tiny city, whatever. And it's kind of built that way in the cards. It's the track tiles are just little small cards, easy to put together, just put them next to each other. Um, there's not that many different ones, so it makes it easier to get into. The company charters aren't these big, you know, papers with just a bunch of information for you to hold your train and stuff on. They're just small cars. And they're all the same size as like the stock shares and stuff. So I just like that what this 18x game is going for. It's going for the small package, a lot of game in a small box, kind of that experience of the 18xx games in a much more digestible manner. So in that sense, I think the production overall is pretty good. Uh, and the rules are pretty easy too. Um, there was a little bit of confusion on a couple of things. One of them I mentioned was, could you lay your special track tiles in the middle of your turn? Did you have to wait to the end uh, or beginning? And then also, I think there was something I was looking up as far as like sorting out these special track tiles. So I didn't get the chance to show you this, but at the end of the book, there was a bunch of different ways you can lay out the track tiles for different scenarios. Um, there's also a different mode of play. You can play with this Brob Ding Nong, I think it is, uh, which is where instead of paying dividends or withholding, you pay 50-50 every time. They have special track tiles that go with that. So um, yeah, I mean, the rules, if anything, they could have maybe given you like a better turn summary because there is real no turn summary card. It just kind of breaks down the phases and the train limits and when trains go obsolete and when they rust. Uh, but as long as you have someone who is pretty familiar with it and can guide the players, then you're going to be okay. And if you play the other 18xx games, everything's going to be pretty familiar as far as what you're doing. Uh, the only difference is going to be getting into gameplay now is how you do your actions. Unlike, let's say, in 1830, where you, there's a stock round, then there's a you know strategic round, there's a stock round, etc. Here, the actions are what the players choose to do. So there's no guarantee you're a goodly chance to place a station if you don't select that action. There's no guarantee you will get to sell or buy stock if you don't take the action. The only thing you will get to do is if you withhold dividends, you will get the chance to buy a train. But outside of that, it's up to you to lay the track tile if you want to by taking that action. Uh, and so I really enjoy that mechanism. It's this action selection thing instead of, again, just kind of, you do everything you want to do, the next person go, everything they want to do, etc. And I, I think that's refreshing. It's again, makes it easier for players to get this game and get into the world of 18xx. And if you want to do those longer, you know, six, seven hour games uh, where you're, you know, getting out, going out to paper, kind of mathing it all out at the end, then you certainly can. Um, but this is, if you're just looking at get, get into the hobby, or get into this particular genre of the hobby, then it's great for that. Uh, I also like the special powers that you have. And the other games have those too with the private companies. Like in 1830, you have your private companies and they all kind of give you different benefits on the board. But uh, I like the special powers here. You know, you get a 50% discount on the stations. You get 10% off your trains. And that can really make a difference later in the game when you're kind of running low and you don't want to use your personal money to cover the expenses of the company you have. Um, that you kind of have that discount. I like that the special track tiles they all give you. you know, the harbor and the towns are really cool because they're going to help you get more income other than the, the basic cities, which are only like 20, 30, 40. I uh, also like that the castle kind of gives you like a who controls it gets a bonus. So if you're trying to time out, you know, I want to put this out there, but I don't want to put it too soon because anybody can put their station there and they're going to get the benefit of it. So maybe I want to wait till I'm the fourth player and then I'll lay the track tile, or I'll lay it on my turn, I'll get the station one, and then I'll play it. Or maybe I need to be the first player to get the station one. That one seems to go pretty quickly. Um, and so I, I just really enjoy that. I also like that um, along with the special player powers, 
The companies, of course, have their special powers. So, you know, I start with two trades if I drop this one, or I get the extra $30 of my personal money, or uh, I can, you know, uh, start with 55 share price instead of 50. Uh, and then how you invest in these other companies is going to be vital. So last we played, I think the final score was like 2200 to like 2146 or 36 It was like a $70 difference or 60 plus uh, between winner and losers. I came in second. But it was really, really close because I had gone with – I was the only person who had started two companies. Uh, there's, that's the limit. You can only have two companies ever at a time, unlike the other games. But they had gone strictly into like diversifying. They were just running their one company, which, again, you can never sell in this game. But they were just investing in other people's companies. So they had a lot of stock in the two companies I had. I had like one stock each in the other two players' companies. And they were just able to reap a bunch of benefits off of the labor that we're doing by just investing as a, you know, as a shareholder. So that's 18xx in its best, and it's, it's a very viable strategy. Uh, the one thing I find is maybe missing if you are like, for me, a big 1830 fan, is the train rush it's good about it. The train rush isn't as punishing in this game because you kind of you don't have to buy a train um, ever if you don't want to, and then you don't you can't dump a company on someone else. So unlike 1830, where you have the 20 percent president share, uh, if someone else ends up having like 40 percent shares, you could maybe sell this off and then stick them with it and then they maybe get stuck with a broke company that has to buy a train because their old trains rusted. Here, not only do you get kind of a warning, you go obsolete and then they rust, but you don't have to buy a train. Also, you can't ever ditch your company. So it kind of leaves it up to you to make sure you have enough money. Now, when you still can, like what I did was I, I floated a new company. I bought a train from the, the company or the train pool. There was like a four or five train there, bought that, then I sold it to my other company for like nothing, one dollar. And then I bought with my leftover money a new train for this one. So I was able to cover my original company's costs because they were broke at that point and just been paying out, paying out, paying out and laying station markers. Uh, and again, at the beginning of the game, you always start with like 500 bucks for that company. So they were pretty poor, but this new company, I was able to flow with my own money and generate more money from it, right? There's really no reason not to start a new company once you get enough money. You'd rather have that money vested somewhere than just sitting there and, and doing nothing, right? And that was maybe the mistake too with not buying more shares myself was I was focused on running these companies really well and building, upgrading the track costs for them to pay more dividends, but I still only just had like 60% of my blue company and then 50% of the second one that I started, whereas other people had gotten in on that. So yeah, it's just interesting. I, that's what my favorite part about 18 x in general is just the stocks and investing in companies that are doing well and, and when to when to withhold so you can buy the next train when it comes available and or maybe I just want to push the train purchases so I can make the other ones obsolete and then I'm already done with those trains. I've already, you know, made them obsolete. I've traded them. I bought new ones. They can't afford to buy trains now so they're gonna have to run these obsolete trains to get half the money. That's awesome. So I really, really enjoy the gameplay. Um sorry I know this was going a little long so I'll try to wrap that up. Time wise it's still long. So if that's a problem, just be aware. A four-player game, probably looking at two to three hours. I think our first game was like three hours. You can probably get that down if you have experienced players. Um, but you can play it solo. haven't tried that yet. Maybe a two-player game a little faster. But it was much faster than an 1830 game, I will say. That, that game can go anywhere from like six to eight hours, uh, depending on your group. So, Plus, if you're looking for a shorter experience, by itself, it's still kind of long, two to three hours. Uh, and the setup and stuff's not that hard. It's just the gameplay and, and kind of really running the train takes the longest because you're trying to map out, like, okay, if I go this way, that's only 80. Okay, I got to go this way, that's 90. If I go this way, okay, hold on. I got to retrack it. That takes a little bit. But it's it's okay. It's good for what it is. But in a vacuum, if you look at, oh, it takes two and a three hours, that's, that's going to be a long time for some players. Um, and then finally, variety, it's great. I mean, Every game is going to play out different based on who you invest in, what they're doing, what decisions they make. There are different modes of play. Again, Rob Ding Dong tiles where you can pay half and half instead of just having to choose withhold or pay 100%. You can put out those other tiles on the on the map where you have to build over mountains or you can't go through this lake, so you have to build around it. Just like there's normal terrain 
you deal with like in an 1830 where you can't go through the lakes of Erie, uh, you can have to pay more if you want to build over a mountain tile, things like that. That's in here. Um, the player powers, you're only going to use five of them in a game. So which players you use and, and those abilities, it's just great. I think great variety for an 18xx game. They're already coming with a good variety. I mean, there are some like dominant strategies is where you start. But beyond that, here it's just kind of like you build the whole map. So where you go, how you go, totally up to you. There are no pre-printed cities to go to. And I love that. So yeah, there you go. Um, on the whole, I really, really enjoyed this. Um, Boy, I was originally going to give it an 8, but I think I'm going to give it a 9, actually. I really enjoyed this. I just like the fun theme. I like the colorful production. I like the kind of uh, sandboxy nature of building this out because you're not on a board that you have to follow. The only rule is the checkerboard. Now, the tiles aren't that different, right? So you're not going to get that many variables sitting a cost. You know, whether it's a straight or an angle, it's whatever. Uh, and there's not as many different shapes and curves and things like that like you would see normally. But between the terrain and the different modes of play and the special powers and the shorter player time, this is something I can get to the table way more than 1830. And for that, I'm super thankful. So uh, there you go. That's my thoughts. 9 out of 10. If you are an 18xx fan, definitely check it out. Uh, if you are someone who's curious about that genre and want something that's a little more digestible, Great starting point. Uh, I've also heard 18 Chesapeake is really good for beginner players. Haven't seen that one yet, but I think this is perfect. It's short, it's small, it's not overwhelming, and worth your time. So there you go. That's my thoughts. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what your favorite 18xx game is. Uh, let me know if you've tried this one, what you think, uh, in those comments below. I've been the game's jester, Ethan Rodriguez, and hope you have a good one.